Jesus' name we pray. Please, can you just raise up your right hand to heaven as we pray? Father, we stand before you in humility. And as we lift up our right hand unto heaven, we are showing allegiance to your supremacy. And we are simply saying, Lord, thou alone is worthy to be praised and adored. We are saying, Lord, that you deserve all the glory, all honor, all adoration and thanksgiving. Lord, as a church, we are saying thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you for everything. We say thank you for everything. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus as you sit in the heavenly places. The Bible said, They that seated in the heavenly places shall rejoice because the Lord have them in the rich. You are sitting in the heavenly places in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. This morning, by the grace of God, we'll be doing something very unique. And I believe God to help us this morning. And I want you to be happy that you are part of the service today. Because by the end of this meeting, you will have something to show that you have met with the Lord. And that will be your testimony in Jesus' name. I want to thank the pastorate at the church and the opportunity that is given me to start before you to share and to help us to, to, to pray according to the will of God this morning. You know, when, the, when, when I, 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 I've been praying for this, this opportunity and I pray for this service, and uh, one of the things that came to my mind and I asked God, I said, could you please confirm that you, this is what you want to talk to your children? You know, sometimes there are some things you ask. You don't even know the way God is going to answer the question. You ask questions, you don't know how he's going to answer. But one thing about God is that he has answer to every question. He has answer to every question. The first thing Pastor Kisley said when he came here was like, he mentioned the topic and he mentioned the verse. When he come to pray. See, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. And he went for that to say, I'm going, well, let us pray to pull down strongholds. And that is what I have today. It's just a confirmation. By the grace of God, this morning, we'll be settling things in the realm of the spirit. Because whether you believe it or not, whether you know it or not, the spiritual controls the physical. If you want to live your life ordinarily, you will die ordinary. But if you want to live your life supernatural, you live in the spirit. Amen. This morning, we'll be praying. We are going to do a lot of prayer as God help us. The time is short, but we're going to do prayers. But I want our prayer to be well-guided so that we pray according to the will of God. The Bible said they all prayed. Everyone is praying. But some pray and miss, not because they did not utter the right vocabulary when they were praying, not because they were not saying the right words, but they were praying and miss because they do not pray according to the will of God. Hallelujah. We'll be looking to, this morning, we'll be looking at pulling down strongholds. Why is it important for us to pray this prayer this morning? The Baptist has declared to us that this year is a year of pulling down strongholds. It's, do I have a witness in the house? And it's very important for us to do it now, especially now that we are fasting. Why? Because every time you enter a new year, things are organized. Even in the realm of the spirit, you need to organize your life. If you do not define your year, the year will define you. Yeah. The reason why we define the year before the year take over its activity is because you need to get control. You need to be able to say along the line that this is what I'm expecting. This is what I need to get. Because if anything go contrary, you should be able to know that you are not on the track. And how do you do that? You settle things in the realm of the spirit. And you do it, if I, for the, since I gave my life to Christ, even before I joined Redeem, January I'll be using it for fasting. Whether Redeem declare their own, because I need to settle things in the realm of the spirit. I don't want to have the year tossing me here or there. I am the one in control. 
you will be in control today in Jesus' name. Pull it down strongholds. What are these strongholds? The word strongholds is two words, strong and hold, which means they are strong and they can hold. Anything that has the ability to stop your movement is a stronghold. Anything that can stop your promotion is a stronghold. Anything that makes you cry is a stronghold. Anything that goes contrary to the will of God for your life, the will of God for your marriage, the will of God for your career, the will of God for your academics, the will of God for your destiny is a stronghold. And if you must know, life is governed by principle. That is why the scientists will say that uh, an object will continue to be in a state of rest until something is added to it. Huh? So, but another thing they've not told you, you must also know is that if something is moving, for him to come to a stop, a force also stop it, is it it? Now for your life and destiny to just come to a full stop, it means something stop it. If that sickness decides to come to your body at a point in time and refuse to stop, uh, leave, it means that something kept holding there. That is a struggle. If that man that you are praying for is not coming, something is holding him there. If that woman you are praying for has not come, something is holding him somewhere, holding her somewhere. If that child has not come, something is holding them somewhere. If that blessing has not come, something is holding it somewhere. And that is what we are going to pray against this morning. Struggles. Anything that causes you to maintain stagnancy where you are supposed to be moving is a struggle. Anything that causes you to be going backward, retrogressing, where you are supposed to be progressing is a struggle. You can measure the least. Anything that takes your blessing from you. That is why we will not take this year very lightly. We need to define. In fact, this is the time you define the outlook of 2020. Because I cannot afford to pass through this year remaining the way I met it. It's not possible. Hallelujah. And these struggles we're talking about, they are not anything more than spiritual oppression. Hallelujah. He says, struggles are more than what the physical you are seeing that I've just mentioned. They are controlled in the realm of the spirit. I'll tell you a story. Some were very close to me. When I meet very close, I have not, oh my God, very close. I came one day and I saw him, a young man that was working, have a very good job. Only for me to come home and he said, he, for the past two years, he has no job. What happened? The, he just came one day, he was, he was, I think, a manager in the depot. If you know what a depot, where they load for, premium spirit. The guy, the, the projection they made for him was for him to be at the top because he was the one building the depot. But one day, they, a message went to the mother at home that the person he's working for is too rich that they are suspected that he used money ritual. And you know people in the village... Once they hear person is too rich, the next thing is that where did he get money? They are not so elated to know that bank can borrow you billions of dollars if they know your business is prospective. They don't know that one. The next thing the mother say, hey, I may be using mother because the guy, when he started making money, the mother died. They say he has used the mother for money richer. Immediately, the mother heard that. He said, my son cannot work there. The guy said he came to work early in the morning. You spoke with your director two days ago. Everything was going on. He just came today. He was just hungry. Stupid man. What are you doing here? Why is this one here? Why is this one? Leave the room. Ru Before you know, he, they sacked him that day. And when he got home, the mother told him that I was not happy that you are working for that man. He said, Mommy, you mean that uh, you have hand in this thing? This thing I'm telling you. I'm on the altar. The mother confessed it to me that she hates work, him working for that. So what did you now do? He said, uh, uh, something happened. Now, what are we talking about? Now the guy is in the village suffering. The question is asking the mom, if you have that power to remove the job, give me another one now. Huh? You think life is easy. 
For someone to sit down and say, this life does not worth living. I wrote a note and, uh, and drink two bottles of snipper and die. You think it's ordinary? Some of us, we are too, we are, you know, when you live, Canada is a very good place. I don't think those demons are here. We are so organized that if you are being carried away that the teeth of the spirit, <laughs> it's not what you joke with. The guy, as I'm talking to you now, he's been with the mother in the village for more than five years, no job. Give him the, the power you use. Now, the mother told me, I said I am not interested in that guy walking there. And that is how the tea ended. You think it's, it's physical battle. The Bible says, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God. I am not here to exalt the devil. Please get me clear. I cannot exalt the devil. But what I'm trying to let you know is that the devil is at work. Whether you like it or not, we are in a battle. If you like, you fight. If you like, you don't fight. But where you will end and where you will find yourself will tell whether you are in a battle at the, where the time comes. But this battle we are talking about is a battle that you have been adequately prepared for. How am I prepared? The Bible says the weapon of our warfare are not what? Cana. Meaning that the weapon you are going to use for this battle has been prepared. By who? By God. They are not man-made. We are not talking of measles here. We are not talking of nuclear bomb. We are not, not talking of a weapon sophisticated by human intelligence. No. We are talking about the weapon that God himself made. Not only did he make them, he is the one using them. Why? How do I know that? The Bible says, are we content with them that we content with you? He told Jehoshaphat, he said, this battle is not yours. It's mine. Now, if God is the one fighting and is the one that made the battle, the weapon himself, and is the one that is going to fight the people he created, I'm telling you, you cannot but succeed and be victorious in this battle. You cannot. You can't afford to fail because the person who is fighting for you is the Almighty. Hallelujah. For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Against principalities and power. But remember, he said that this same principality and power is the head of them. It was in, it's in your Bible. He said, this is the end of all principalities and power. Referring to who? Jesus Christ. One day, I was asking a question. Then, with all these promises that we have, why is the devil still, like, troubling us, giving us a headache and all these things? The simple truth is that the devil is also a principal person. How many of you know that the devil is principal? It takes principle for you to follow law. Simple law. One day, God, the devil was troubling my life. Uh, it's a long story. When I, when I gave my life I was to Christ, I was being persecuted. My dad smoked and he drinks. And so, if I, if I said I'm not going to buy smoke for him, I'm in trouble. So, but anytime I go and buy for him, for one week, I will not be able to pray. The devil will be, as soon as I need that to pray, you know, you just buy a cigarette just now. I will start up. But I was dying. One day I ran into a book written by John Austin. Kick the devil out of your life. When I read it, I said, ah, I called for a meeting. Say, God, come, sit down. Devil, you, come, sit down. Did I sin against the devil? No, how many of you sin, sin against the devil? You did not sin against the devil. Go and check your Bible. No one sin against the devil. The old devil only take advantage of your ignorance. You sin against God, he come and stand and say, God, you know you said, if person did this kind of thing, he should be punished. Please allow me to punish him. It's simple. You did not sin against the devil. I said, devil, listen, I did not sin against you. As a matter of fact, I am not created by you and for you. Are you created by the devil? Are you created for the devil? No! He's an accuser of the brethren. I told him, you are... An, if I sin against any person, I sin against God. And the Bible told me, this same God is my father. He can forgive me. I pray for forgiveness. Forgive me. I know I will not continue to see that the grace may abound, but that does not mean that one I see 20 years ago, you are using it to punish me. Are you an advocate? Is somebody hearing me? You need to understand the word by principle, and the principle of God is also higher than himself. 
Praise the Lord. And Daniel began to pray. 21 days, just as we are fasting. He was not playing. He was not an unbeliever. What happened to him? The prayer we are heard in Daniel chapter 10. Now, simple thing. Why will somebody be praying and fasting? And the, the, the demon must still have power to withhold this prayer. That is to tell you that the life itself is a battle itself. What happened to him? 21 days old. The prayer was answered the first day. Is, go and check your Bible. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. He said, from the day you started praying, that is where, when I released the blessing. But now, I, the agent that the Lord has sent, as I was coming, the king of Persia, powers that would not ma- allow you to get answer to your prayer, the principality we are talking about, which had me in the sky. I cannot bring the answer to you. That is why our prayer is going to be very, very straightforward. Against priests of Persia, that will not want your miracle to be delivered in this year 2020. You're going to be faced. Face them. There's nothing like trying to go around. This 2020, this is what I want to achieve. The demon that will not allow me to achieve it must be taken care of. It takes an intervention of an archangel for that blessing to be released. Which means even the angel that is bringing your blessing can be cornered. They can corner the angel that is bringing your blessing. Sometimes you just, why is my manager just misbehaving? Just change face all of a sudden. Somebody has ejected something. He's being controlled in the realm of the spirit. And you, you will be there as a child of God. You start saying, I don't like this manager. I don't like, I don't know why he hates me. Someone makes him to hate you. Someone is controlling him, controlling her. And you need to take care of that person. Otherwise, you will be fighting the wrong person. That is why the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of struggles. I want you to stand up. We are going to do one prayer point first as we continue. Start on your feet. We are going to be doing it and be praying. Number one, I want you to take this prayer very seriously. You say after me, Father God, please remove from my life any filthy garment that gives the enemy power over my life, power over my destiny. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, please remove from me every filthy garment, every filthy garment that gives the enemy power over my life, power over my life, Power over my destiny. Power over my destiny. Lord, Lord, remove them in the name of Jesus. 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 A Jesus name we pray. Take a seat. We pray that prayer because sometimes the reason why they have power over us is because they find something a fault in us. The Bible says, and the Lord showed a revelation to Joshua. And the Joshua was standing before the angel of the Lord in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. And the, the angel, the, the, the setter also appeared, was accusing Joshua. He said, Joshua, you are putting on a garment that is stained. And that is why I have the right to come here. As I'm talking to you now, Joshua, you are a sinner. He took an intervention of God because the reason why, not because Joshua did not sin, not because you did not sin, but the Bible says in Romans chapter chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 8 verse 33, he said, who can lay charge against God's elect? It is Christ that justified. It's not the devil that justifies you. Anytime the devil is making you feel stupid because you have committed a sin, you did not sin against him. Who can lay charge against God's elect? It is Christ that justifies it. And Jesus appeared and said, Satan, I rebuke you. This same Joshua that you are accusing that is a sinner, he has been plucked out of sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you are going to pray this prayer as you start up with me. Say, Father God, 
Father God, please send your archangel to defeat the priest of Persia, the power in the air. He dream my prayers. He dream my blessings. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree the name of Jesus. Please send your archangel to contend with them that are hindering my prayers, hindering my blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your power, let your angel, let your archangel contend with them that contend with me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Have your seat. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 2, the Bible says when Jesus died and he was buried, you know what these people did? Because they needed and they planned and they desired that Jesus should not resurrect. Just the same way they have planned, that you will not get to your next level. They know the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of scripture. They know that if Jesus come back to life, as he said, many will believe in him. Just the same way you believe in him. They wanted to stop that progress. They wanted to stop that promotion. They planned to stop that testimony. And they roll a stone on the, on the grave of Jesus Christ. But one thing that struck me as I began to read the scripture is that when the time came for the fulfillment of the scripture, the Bible said the angel of the Lord came and rolled away the stone. Look at your Bible very carefully. When the angel rolled away the stone, he did not go. He sat on the stone. Do you know what that represents? Permanent victory. The reason why some of you, you get the victory today, is slip off your hand, is because it's not a permanent one. Maybe the agent that came to remove the, the, the indrasses left. And the people that put the indrasses there came again and put it back. But at this very point in time, because the fulfillment of the scripture, he came, he rolled away the stone and he sat on it. You are going to pray this morning that as the angel of the Lord is rolling away every stone that is covering your blessing, Stop doing your, your promotion. The angel will not go. He will sit on those two to ensure your permanent victory. Stand on your feet as we pray. You say after me, Father Lord, Father Lord, please remove every stone the enemies have used to cover my blessing, my promotion, my breakthrough in the grave. Let your angel sit on that stone to ensure my victory. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Father, that stone is removed in the name of Jesus. That stone is removed in the name of Jesus. That stone is removed in the name of Jesus. The stone that is stopping my progress, stopping my breakthrough, stopping my testimony, stopping my promotion. Stopping my healing. Stopping my success. You are rolled away. And the angel of the Lord sits on you. The angel of the Lord sits on you. The angel of the Lord sits on you. This is permanent victory. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Have your seat. Many of us, you have been asking questions. Where are those promises that we see in the Bible. Where are the fulfillment of those words of prophecies that have come over our life? Those decree, those dreams, those vision. I saw in my dream, I was in so, so, so place. I desire to be there. You are asking questions, why have they not come to fulfillment? Some could be that they've not come to the time because God has planned for every, everything and there is time for everything. But there are some that they are overdue. But the enemy have stopped them from happening. But sometimes at your life, you need to take action because you can't make progress until there is a force pushing you to make progress. David, at between the age of 10 and 15, he was anointed king. The age of David, as at the time he was anointed, was between 
between different scholars, we say 11, 12. Let's say between 10 and 15. Did he become a king that very time? It took him some time. In fact, the only time, the only premise, the only avenue, the only occasion he was announced to his glory is when he defeated Goliath. Go and check your Bible. So many of us, our next level require a destruction of a Goliath. Our next promotion requires that a Goliath must be killed. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 30, he was anointed. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, five years later, he was still struggling. And he saw an avenue. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 33 to 34. There was an advert to kill a Goliath. An advert. It was a job placement. Who will kill Goliath? He asked people, anyone that will kill Goliath, what will you give to him? What is the remuneration? Where is the pay package for this job? He saw the pay package very interesting, just like every one of us. And he submitted. The first time he gave his resume to his brother. Did you read your Bible like that? Some of you are looking as if I'm reading another Bible. He gave his resume. The Bible says he came to his brother. He said, I can do that. The brother said, stop that. You are started again. He gave his resume to his brothers. And the brother looked at it. You again. He teared the resume. And the guy was like, this is what I am called for. 10, 15 years ago, I was anointed a king. How do I become a king? I don't know. But now there is an avatar. And I know if I'm able to do this, I will be announced. I will come to my glory. He went to the, to the king, King Saul. I said, so. I can do this job. Oh. I have experience in killing lion and bear. He put everything in his resume. And the, 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 the man looked at him. I'm sure it was an interview setting. You know those people, when they wear tie, they look at you in an interview. All that you read disappear. <laughs> Jesus. They look at you as if you are fighting. Yeah, continue. Continue. If you, you will be asking yourself, am I saying nonsense? Why is he just looking at me? He looked after everything. He said, uh, uh, dear, dear David, your resume is very fantastic. You kill lion, you kill a bear, you be in the bush, you are very rugged. I'm sorry. This position is for experienced warrior. 20 years experience. Because Goliath then was told that he started for when he was a youth. Calculate the age of a youth. It was 20 years and above. Is somebody hearing me? It's mystery. It, they discounted him immediately. He said, I can do this job now. They say, you cannot do the job. And he knew too well that if I kill this Goliath, my glory will start. Some of us, what is covering your glory is the Goliath that you need to kill. The Goliath. The glory of your marriage, there is a Goliath there. The glory of your career, there is a Goliath there. The glory of your destiny, there is a Goliath. But some of us, we are even rubbing mad with the Goliath. Push me and push you. No problem. We are still making progress. Even though we took one step up and two back upward, we are still alive now, Abby. We are not alive to manage. We are alive to excel. Hallelujah. But in verse 50, 50 of that first Samuel chapter 17, the Bible says he took a step. After much persuasion, they say, okay, let's give this guy a trial. May the Lord give you an opportunity to announce you. Amen. I'm sure that at this very point, the brother were like, we have lost our brother. They just called their father. They were using to riot at that time. Hello, daddy. How many children do you have? Twelve. Remove one. Minus one. Why? Because he was taking an adventure. They concluded he cannot survive it. Why? Because Goliath, we know, was being, has been a warrior from youth. If you go to your Bible, calculate the, the, the height of Goliath. If only the sheet that he can carry with one hand, three of us, we hold it, we cannot move it. You want to fight that kind of person? But it is not the weapon of our warfare. They are not carnal. They are mighty through God who know how to use only a stone to penetrate the forehead. That is what we are talking about. 
The weapon of our warfare, they are mighty through God who know how to manipulate a stone from the string into the forehead of, an, of a Goliath. That is what we are talking about. What happened? Just a stone and he threw it. The same person who killed Goliath did not even have a knife to tell you that the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. It was when Goliath died, he used his own knife to cut his head. You're going to start up and we are going to pray. You're going to say after me, Father Lord, Father Lord please, empower please empower me to kill every Goliath, kill every Goliath. standing on my way to my next level. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, empower me. Lord, empower me to kill every Goliath standing on my way to my next level. Standing on my way to my promotion. Standing on my way to my lifting. Standing on my way to my glory. And the poor satale de bo. E katapanano lo bo. Le gadabo shatalaraba. Adabo zeketeketa. In the name of Jesus, every Goliath in my life, I defeat you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. The last prayer. You are going to pray this prayer with seriousness. There is a way God will show up in your life. Only your testimony will bring people to church. We are in a generation of I want to see and I want to touch. I don't know whether you have understanding. The reason why false prophets are, are growing in, in great number is before, because people are patronizing them. People want to hear and they want to see and they want to touch. And don't blame them because even the time of Jesus Christ, the Bible says most of them that follow him, follow him because they saw signs. They saw words. We're going to pray that God, Daniel, 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 Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they bound there, they put them into fire. They saw that three people they put inside fire, another person joined them. The same king that, on, that gave an order to put them in fire was the one that was saying, hey, God, there, there is God. He said, come, come, all of you, even the ones that gathered them into the fire, let us serve the God of Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego. You are going to pray today. Say, God, show up in my life. Show, do something mighty in my life that will give glory to your name. That will bring people into your kingdom. Your life must be a testimony. In this year 2020, God must show up in your life. God must make you a living testimony. Your testimony must bring people into the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, show yourself mighty in my life. God, show yourself mighty in my destiny. God, show yourself mighty in my career. God, show yourself mighty in my marriage. God, show yourself mighty in my body. God, show yourself mighty in my, in my, in my business. God, show yourself mighty in my spiritual life. That may we see your glory. May we see your glory. May we see your glory. And that we testify. That we testify that I serve a living God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you are just standing, I want you to humble yourself. Just put your two hands on your head as we make this decree. And you are going to say it after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree in the name of Jesus that from this time onward, I live a life of dominance. I will dominate in the name of Jesus. Whatever have stopped me before now, they are taken care of in the name of Jesus. Every Goliath in my life stopping me from my next level, from my glory, Lord, I kill them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, that this year, 2020, you will show yourself mighty in my life. That people will see me 
and they will confess that I serve a living God. My testimony will bring many into your kingdom. This I pray in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for Jesus.